All right, thank you so much for the programs to hear this morning on ITV. Now, we've got uh, Mr. Austin Adigwe. He's uh, joining us via Zoom. He's in Lagos. Uh, so he's a stakeholder when it comes to uh, the petroleum uh, issues in the country. So we are first and foremost going to be talking about uh, the uh, cash uh, withdrawal policy just uh, released by the CBN because it's, it's a general issue. It's a public opinion issue. So uh, we look at that first before we talk about the fuel crisis, how it relates to what is happening in Lagos, whether it is the same thing uh, the way it's happening in, in, in Edusta here. Now, Mr. Austin, are way, good morning one more time. Okay. Now, uh, just uh, this morning in Benin, we saw various reactions uh, as it relates to the recent, uh, you know, CBN withdrawal policy. I don't know how Lagosians are reacting to it in Lagos too. Okay. Yeah, so the um, new procedures for cash withdrawal. I believe that's what you're talking about. Yeah. For, for customers that have been paying uh, the COT, I mean, they pay, uh, you know, some form of uh, uh, monies uh, for bank transactions and all that. Now, you're asking the same customers to start paying a uh, percentage if they withdraw more than uh, the stipulated amount. Is that not asking for too much? Well, the fact that you don't necessarily have to withdraw above that stipulated amount, what do you need in cash for? Is it for decoration? It's just as a medium of exchange. You should also understand that cash in its liquid form is non interest bearing. It is not any asset. So you still don't have much need for it. But should you require should you require that volume of cash, then you must be able to state what and what that cash is required for. Mm. You see the challenges we have, the great challenges we have around. People in one way or the other are financing all the mandatory terrorism and all this come from all this come from all this kind of cash that you have outside the banking system. I don't think that will create any problem, but if you go to advanced countries like UK, America, you don't actually close your hundred uh, hundred dollars bill for every single transaction. No, even the law as it stands now requires that you don't pay cash for any transaction above five million. That's the law. So I think if you have got to try this time around, we need to strengthen the banking culture of Nigeria. And of course, every change will come with its own cost. But I believe that the benefit of this new policy will outweigh whatever cost that we're looking at here. Okay. Now, uh, you, you, you talked about a while ago that uh, should you uh, withdraw uh, more than that uh, stipulated amount, that's when you have to pay uh, what you're supposed to pay. But let's look at it in a more practical terms. Because you're telling somebody that uh, you should not withdraw more than 100,000 naira on a daily basis and more than, uh, let me get my record straight now so that I don't give you uh, maximum withdrawal. More than what? Hello? Hello? 
Okay, weekly. Now, is that not too much of a small amount compared to, I mean, looking at it from the angle that Nigerians, uh, the way they want to spend money? Because we are looking at a situation whereby uh, people involved in some form of development, uh, you know, building houses and all that, they have some wages to pay and that they need to carry large amounts of money, uh, you know, to uh, where they need to pay. So is it going to be feasible after all? Uh, what we have just described is uh, the old method of building things. The large amount of cash of carrying also a source of insecurity on its own part to you that is carrying that cash. We are saying that your worker can be paid. You can actually do electronic payment into the respective account. Now, uh, you, you, you might be surprised. In Lagos, here you have some markets like Ladipo Market and Bonny Market. That you want to argue that okay, uh, those traders are not well uh, educated, they might not really appreciate electronic transfer. But go there for part of 10,000, 15,000. These traders will need to do a transfer into their accounts. Nobody wants to be carrying cash on and around. It is not ideal, and it must be better. This is one of the areas that we have to pay the price to get it right. Okay. Mm. How do you also react to uh, the part of uh, the, the information now that only 200 naira is going to be found in ATM machines uh, from uh, the time uh, the policy is going to start? Very beautiful. In short, when CBN came up with this idea of designing naira, I was one of the voices against it. Because I said that what was needed was not actually to redesign naira. Or to demonetize the higher currency, take out 1,000 naira notes, take out 500 naira notes, make it 200 naira notes the higher currency. But now, you see, what we are saying here is very simple. Do not actually do so. What, what is going on now might appear to, to be like a compulsion on Nigeria to use the bank. But you see, having 200 or 100 naira at the highest highest denomination. We now make it even more convenient for Nigerians to use financial services. But there are also talks yeah. that yeah, there are talks that uh, the 200 naira uh, note or denomination now uh, seems to be uh, the lowest uh, denomination in terms of availability. That most times you go to banks, you don't find them. Now, the CBN is on the verge of uh, trying to redesign the Naira notes. And of course, uh, they are also telling Nigerians again that uh, uh, if you go to ATMs now, that the only denomination that will be available is the 200 Naira notes. So, how do you think Nigerians can put all this together? That's a country that is still found wanting in terms of uh, technology. Uh, because some of these things we are talking about now, it, it is going to border on the uh, technological preparedness, if you like now, or the technological well-being of, of Nigeria as a nation. I mean, we have, you know, suburbs that uh, 
uh, they probably don't have uh, banks are there, and of course they need fiscal cash to run their life. Uh, so how those kind of uh, set of people, how do they fit into uh, this uh, policy now? Yes, of course. Um, but I also tell you that hardly would you find any part of this country that, um, because of the um, emergence of fintech, you see periods of prisoners everywhere. So, obviously, number one, let me, number one, talk about uh, assurance or reliability of the alternative payment system. Mm. I tell you that you need to start before you begin to talk about whether this will actually take it to where I'm going to or not. If you continue to start, you will never start. But the payment system so far, I rely on We've been using them. Yeah, we're not talking about the payment system now. We are talking about the attendance implications, uh, the, the, what we fall, the fall, fall out of it all. Uh, because uh, are you sure Nigerians are ready? Uh, is it not going to do more evil, so to say, than good? That's what we're looking at. No, the, benefit, the benefit of this policy, I can assure you, the benefit of this policy outweighs the cost. Of course, in a lot, you see, when you bring change, when you bring change, it will disrupt the open order. Mm. There will be some discomfort here and there. But I'm just telling Nigeria, I'm an economist, I understand what playing out here. The benefit at the end of the day will outweigh the short-term uh, inconvenience or cost that we might be looking at. And for those in the circle, I believe that as the implementation uh, processes are going on, there might be reviews where it becomes so glaring that financial services cannot get to certain areas. For the game, you talk about financial services getting to uh, the rural areas because you still want them to remain cash dependent. Mm. If we strengthen our internet services, you have the USSB, there are a lot of options there. We can always transact even in the village using this alternative option. Now, when criminals understand that you no longer keep money at home, they will stay away from you. There are so many things you need to begin to look at. From the economic standpoint, it is good. From the security standpoint, it is perfect. Yeah, but, but don't, you think, don't you think the federal government ought to have, uh, you know, uh, handle a whole lot of issues, uh, security and all that? Because we understand that the criminals you talked about, uh, criminals even go around with POS machines these days. And of course, transactions are done, and not even the CBN, not uh, maybe authorities of the federal government has been able to uh, really handle the situation in that regard. So after all, the way uh, criminals are also uh, getting more technologically inclined is also something that the federal government has not been able to handle. Don't you think so? Okay, uh, so no, I, I agree with you. It's not, it's not uh, the case of uh, uh, federal government performing their roles and every other thing not working. Oh, I agree that Nigeria is challenged. Mm. Nigeria is challenged in so many areas leadership and that is why we are in this kind of situation okay, okay. but we should also agree that we don't have to get everything right before policies are implemented what the bill is doing is really on that policy management and it is a statutory responsibility there is no way the act establishing the bill that requires them to wait on the certain period or the certain things are done. It's just their responsibility. That's how they feel they will handle these uh, challenges of the uh, currency management. Okay. In terms of security, you know, I, I agree. Mm. The, the criminals are also getting sophisticated. But don't also forget that there are electronic signatures mm. when we do certain things online. Okay. For cash, this everybody drill. Right. Yeah, 
Yeah, yeah, we understand that the policy is going to start uh, to be in effect from January 9th uh, next year, 2023. How correct is that? Yes. Uh, from, so the, the whole process will kick in on the 15th of December. Those are 500, the old 500, uh, uh, 200, and the 1,000 uh, those pieces to uh, the um, uh, legal tender from 31st of January. So that is the window for depositing the old notes into your account, okay, for future withdrawal. Okay. All right. So let's uh, quickly attend to uh, the other topic we have for today now because our time is fully far spent on this uh, program. Uh, we are looking at uh, the lingering fear crisis in parts of uh, Nigeria. Now, uh, you live in Lagos, uh, in Benin here. Uh, the cheapest fuel you can get now is um, sells for like um, uh, 230 naira for uh, independent marketers. That's the cheapest you can get. Now, for major marketers, uh, you still have 170, 179, and all that. Now, what is responsible? Because Nigerians are kind of confused. They don't know what is going on. Uh, we hear different talks here and there that um, the private depot seems to have taken over, uh, you know, the sales of, of fuel. What is the situation, Mr. Adigwe? Okay, I think the perennial fuel capacity is self-inflicted. We should not pretend that uh, we should not pretend that. Do not know, all right, why we are going to do this cycle. There are seven factors that are responsible for what we are going through now. This is coming from build up of inactivity and by the number of things that we've done wrong. The foundation of what you see today as well crisis and whatever is about continued dependence and reliance on importation for our uh, petroleum products. When you open up your economy, because you know that petroleum products start as a life wire of an economy, they open up your economy to international price fluctuations because you buy finished products from other countries. Then you will expect a lack of supply from time to time. You expect that as you're bringing the, the petroleum products, you are as well bringing in what is called imported inflation. For a country that God has blessed with crude oil, we have, we have no business importing. But since you decided to import, then the prices remain with us. Yeah, but now, I will tell you what. Yeah, but on but on that list, list importation, you also have that. You know that we have forest prices. Mm. And we need this same forest to import it. So when we have shortages, definitely we depend on what on the supply side. Yeah, I, I know. I know that one of the factors seems to be uh, the non-availability or the shortage of uh, forex or foreign exchange and all that. But uh, uh, there are talks that private depot owners now seems to be in charge of fuel, uh, you know, sales of fuel in Nigeria. Uh, don't you think yeah. that government needs to look inward uh, because? Uh, the, 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 yeah. The reason is that a, for, for a country as big as Nigeria, okay, to rely on NMP solely to import this product that is also this important, okay, mm. makes us look like an unserious, unserious bit. NMP doesn't have to stock as we speak. They don't have to stock. Does NMP even have to facilitate? to hold the stock of petroleum product that will pass this country for one month? The answer is no. The answer is no. Mm. So, if SMPP does not have this product, or as you have heard from independent marketers, and NMP is also collab collaborated, that this product, even at depot, at depot price, is now sold for 178 and against 148 because problematic. Mm. So, it's not about how much petrol is sold now. It's about what we want to do, okay, to affect future crisis in this sector. Because it has continued. Even with the PIB that was signed into law, mm. the same country, Nigeria, suspended the 
supermarket clause in that law. It makes us look like serious jokers. An act that was supposed to liberalize, you are suspending the path that should stimulate investment in that sector. Okay. All right. So we Again, you find yeah, we, we just uh, opened my, our lines now for callers uh, because we also have that segment too. Uh, so call us one or two calls, one or two calls, 0708365132. Uh, you just tell us one or two things about uh, the lingering fear, uh, you know, situation in the country and also the new uh, cash withdrawal policy just released by the CBN. One or two calls, 0708365132. One or two calls uh, for our viewers out there. Uh, this morning. All right, so as we expect uh, uh, the calls now, uh, Mr. Austin Adigwe, so uh, uh, let's feel. So is it the same thing in Lagos? Uh, we, bear, we buy uh, 230, 235, 240, 215 in Benin. Uh, we, is it the same thing in Lagos? Lagos, Lagos, I have bought for you in Lagos. 216. 216. 216. 260. Naira. Wow. Wow. All right, so I'm afraid that's all time we permit us to take on the show now. So a very big thank you, uh, Mr. Austin Adigwe, for calling into the program this morning. Thank you for having me. Okay.